We covered comments at the beginning of this course. We covered two syntaxes of single line comments, and we also covered the syntax of the multi line comment. There is also another type called doc block that can be added to functions, methods, classes, interfaces, variables, properties, and so on. The syntax is similar to multi line comment, it just has an additional asterisk right here. Doc block provides a better structured documentation for your code. It can be used to automatically generate API documentations, can be used by other developers who are reading your code, can be used to enhance or change the functionality through annotations, can be used by IDEs to provide better auto completion, and so on. Doc blocks can also have tags. Let's go through some of these tags that you most often see and use. The first two that we're going to look at are the return and the param tags. The param tag can be used to document an argument of a function or a method, and the return tag can be used to document the return type. These tags are especially useful if you're not type hinting or you simply want to provide additional information about the argument or return type. I have a transaction class here as an example that has a single method called process that accepts two arguments, customer and amount. And let's assume that within this method, we process the transaction and if it fails, we return false and if it's successful, we return true. So let's assume that every Everything was successful and simply return true here and here we can add the duck block and as you can see my ID auto completes this duck block after hitting enter within the param tags we can specify the types because we're not type hinting here so we can say that the customer argument is actually the type of the customer class and the amount is the type of float and then return is the boolean you could also optionally add the description right after and also provide the description for the method as well now some developers prefer to document everything I personally don't document document everything because you can simply type hint these right we can simply do customer here and float here and this essentially does the same thing as this we can also type in the return here to boolean and this doc block kind of becomes redundant unless you want to provide some additional information about the arguments return type or the method itself also if you're expecting that an argument can be of multiple types or your method can return multiple types then prior to php8 you had to use doc block and use the pipe character to specify the multiple types however since php8 you can now use union types to type hint multiple types the next tag that we're going to talk about is the throws tag which simply indicates what exception or exceptions are expected to be thrown by this method or the function and we haven't covered exceptions yet which is coming up very soon but basically you're able to specify what exception is expected to be thrown from this method so you would set the name of the exception here then duplicate it if you're expecting more than one exception type to be thrown and set it that way. The next tag that we're going to cover is the var tag which is used to document the type of the properties variables and constants. Let's say that we want to have the customer and amount as properties instead of the arguments passed to the method. So we would define the properties here and let's simply get rid of this method for now since we don't need it. And prior to PHP 7.4 you were not able to type hint this. So what you had to do is you had to use duck block here using the var tag to specify the type of this property so we would do customer in this case and we would do float in this case however since php 7.4 you could also type hint the properties directly this var tag is especially useful when working with loops if you're looping over a collection or array of objects where each element is an object of some class you can type hint that using the var tag and then ides like php storm will autocomplete properties and methods that are available on that object so for example, we could have some kind of method foo here where we were accepting an array and assuming that each element of that array is an object, we would do something like this. We would loop over the array and then maybe we want to access properties or methods on that object. So we could call some kind of method here. Now IDs will not be able to autocomplete this because it does not know what type this object is. You can type hint that using the var tag here and you could say that maybe this array is an array of customers. So you could specify a customer Customer here and we now we know that my method does not exist on customer but I know that customer object has a single property name which I added so we can simply access that and we see that ID is auto completing that and we can even click into it another way you could do this without the var tag is that if you're accepting an argument in a method you could simply add the doc block to the method and instead of the array type you could say that this is an array of customers and you could do that by using the customer type with square brackets and this indicates 
indicates that we have an array of customers and now we can get rid of this and it will still auto complete properties and methods on that object finally the last two tags that i want to cover today are the property and method tags these allow a class to know which magic methods and properties are available remember when we covered magic methods to create dynamic properties and call non-existing methods those properties and methods can't really be auto completed if they're not available directly in the class right however with the help of these tags you can specify what properties and methods are available in this class for example we can say that this class has an integer property x and it has a float property y and then we assume that we are using the getter and setter methods here to generate these dynamic properties now when we have an object of transaction the ids will be able to auto complete x and y because we've added this property tag in here now if you only wanted to hint it that a property is only for reading purposes or property is only for writing purposes meaning that it's read only or write only then you could simply do property read and property write and ide will simply underline improper usage but if you want it to be available for both reading and writing then you simply use the property similar to properties you could also have magic method calls right you could have underscore underscore call and underscore underscore call static for the static methods and these can call some unexisting methods right they can call methods on other objects or something like that and they can't really be auto completed on this object you can make it auto complete by adding method tag here and specify the return type so let's say that we have a method that returns integer and the method is called foo and it accepts string as an argument and now when we use an object of this class the method foo will be available which returns integer and accepts a string argument x if you wanted to make this static then you would add static right in the front note that none of these tags add any kind of validation they may add some ide level validation where ide can underline things based on the tags but it won't affect your code execution annotation is basically another form of tag that in addition to documenting the code it can also have an effect on the way that code behaves so it lets you embed metadata inside the doc block which can then be processed by some package tool or framework php 8 introduced something called attributes which has a similar purpose and we'll cover attributes in a separate video later in the course i'm going to leave the link in the description where you can read more about doc blocks and rest of the available tags in more detail so check it out if you want to know more i personally used to document everything a couple of years ago but because php has been getting great type support and now with the union types in php 8 i can simply type hint everything which makes most of doc blocks redundant for me so i've been adding fewer and fewer doc blocks to my code now this is a personal thing though some developers prefer to add doc blocks and some don't i no longer prefer to add them unless they provide actual value or some additional context or information if i have a simple method that has arguments and return type hinted adding doc block to simply reiterate that is in my opinion extra noise and does not add anything valuable it does add some coloring in editors which can provide a nice separation between the methods but that is not a good enough reason for me to add doc blocks to everything but again it's just my preference another reason why i stopped writing doc blocks is to kind of push me to write better and simpler code if i have to write a long description explaining what the method does it is kind of an indication that maybe that method is doing too much or that it is too complicated i see an opportunity to refactor and simplify the method so that no additional comments are needed that has been working out pretty well for me and it pushes me to write simple and self-explanatory code where the method signature is all that's needed to understand the basics of what the method is doing or what it's supposed to do now of course this does not apply to everything there are always edge cases where i do need to provide some additional information and this also does not mean that you should not document your code there are definitely use cases for it and also it's matter of preference let me know in the comments what you think about doc blocks and whether or not you prefer to document everything and what is your opinion overall on this topic this is it for this video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this lesson please give it a thumbs up share and subscribe and i'll see you next time